and we're back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the finale of Let's Stream Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Where, after an attempt on our life from John... Uh, uh, with John from IT turning out to be a sage, namely Aita, the husband of Juno, the ghost in the machine herself, he tried to kill us and was taken down by Abstergo Entertainment's interior security team. And we have been hacking for the assassins and our own curiosity ever since with our level 3 clearance that no one seems to know about. But we have just a little bit more to go with Edward. So, let's do that now. Gentlemen, how do you find it here? It will work for us. But our goal must be to scatter our operations. To live and work among the people we protect, just as Altairi Ben Lahad once counseled. Well, until that time, it's yours as you see fit. Edward, Captain Woods Rogers survived his wounds. He has since returned to England, shamed and in great debt, but no less a friend. I will finish that job when I return. You have my word. Evening, Anne. Edward? I'll be sailing for London in the next few months. I'd be a hopeful man if you were beside me. <laughs> England's the wrong way around the globe for an Irish woman. Will you stay with the assassins? No, I haven't got that kind of conviction in my heart. You? In time, I. And my mind is settled and my blood is cool. Sail ho! Coming into the cove! <laughs> You're a good man, Edward. And if you learn to keep settled in one place for more than a week, you'll make a fine father too. And all the harm that 
What an ending. Father, did you always know how to sail a boat? The Jackdaw is a ship, Jenny. Not a boat. But did you always know? No. No, I learned after leaving Bristol. After you left Mother? Well, I didn't leave your... I didn't leave without saying goodbye, that is. It was an arrangement, you see, between your mother and me. She said you left her. She said you always talked about sailing the boat and making money in the new world. I did always want to sail a ship. That's true. But not for a lot. To support us. To take care of her. And you. Not me. Mum said you didn't know about me. She said you were to only once a year and that she never knew where to find you. It's all true, and I'm sorry for that. I had known earlier. I might have come home. I hope that I would have. Well, you were busy. That's what I think. I was, but... That wouldn't have mattered. Can I see your boat? Boat? I see no boat here. Do you? I mean ship, obviously. I don't see the difference anyway. Ah, it's a very simple one, Jenny. A ship can carry a boat, but a boat cannot carry a ship. Why then, everything is a ship, large and small, but for my toy boat, the one I take into the bath with me. <laughs> well, that's a clever way of seeing it. Is it hard to talk about Caroline, Jenny? About your mother? Mm, no. She passed some years ago. I miss her, but it's all right. Was she in pain? I don't know. I don't think so. She was very happy for quite some time. Then, not so happy. I didn't see her much after that. Then, she was gone. I... I'm sorry. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you. It's all right. You're here now. And we're on an adventure. Now, only a little one, I hope. Can't handle too many more surprises. You think we'll see a whale? Yes, there's a very good chance. Hmm. And what about pirates? Will I see pirates? No. Not much chance of that, I think. Oh, that's rather sad. I should have liked to have seen one. Tell you what, Jenny. As soon as these winds die a little, I'll let you steer the jackdaw. One little trick of the helm before sundown. Yay! <laughs> Jennifer Kenway. May I introduce myself? Jennifer Scott, if you please. I'm sorry. I... I... Uh... My daughter was raised by her mother, Caroline, until she passed away some years ago. Jenny prefers to use her surname to mine. Ah. Please forgive my ignorance. I will. She may not. Father, help me. This little rascal, however, is a Kenway. What's wrong, Haven? I can't see the stage. Up we go. How's that? Fine. But won't your arms tire? Hey, I'm not so old as that. But if they do, then we shall quit this posh gig and go and meet your mother for some chocolate and whites. How's that sound? Yes, please. Okay, hush now.
Oh. You know, it's kind of bittersweet knowing what happens after the fact. Uh, not just with Assassin's Creed 3, but there's a novel that goes into Haytham's upbringing. Ah. Great game, Black Flag. Great game. Very glad we were able to go through it. But that is that. Now there's one thing I would I finish the game? Yeah. There we go. If we had anything else to do, we'd go do it, but we do not. Now, you can see that we have new friends here, as Edward has donated his Paradise Co. to the Assassin Brotherhood. Yes. Ah. Uh. Great stuff. And it has been quite a long time coming. We've had some great adventures. We built up this paradise and look there in the bottom corner. We are flush with cash. And I think you know, I think we've done very well. Absolutely gutting that final cinematic with all of our fallen friends around the table as we go to meet Caroline, our beloved daughter. But this is where I believe we'll leave Edward in the prime of his life with his little bit of paradise. And he has no idea what's awaiting him. Likely the greatest adventure of all. And that's being a parent. But, even though this ends his story, there is another story that we need to address. Now, I may include this in another video series that I'm thinking about doing, but it wouldn't be very entertaining just to hear me read all of the database entries. Now, would it? But, I do think that we owe it to ourselves and to our old friend Desmond to say goodbye with his final memo. But, there is one last computer we haven't hacked. And that's the boss's. The boss we have left, anyway. Very short episode today, but hopefully that'll be rectified with the content. Oh, wow. I'm just going to completely choke, aren't I? Oh, we were right there. There we go. Access granted. Let's see what you've got in here. Initial reports on Aveline de Grand Prix led us to believe she would be too controversial and impulsive to appeal to a wide audience. Teenage memories show her brainwashed and trained to kill political foes of her highly unstable mentor, Agate. Additionally, Aveline spent a disappointing amount of time in the Louisiana Bayou, consorting with smugglers of the lowest kind. Oh, I try never to think. <laughs> which we felt risked her appeal to our female audience, which is now approaching 50%. However, as Aveline matured, a new side emerged. 
A well-mannered and considerate lady of poise and compassion, Aveline came to embrace a new mentor, her stepmother, Madeline Delisle, a tireless fighter for the rights of slaves. Thank you, Madeleine. With some editing to prioritize this relationship, we feel Aveline's story will more than meet our needs. Our team recommends a go on this property. Get this one to market quickly. Ah, yes. We'll go ahead and go through the others. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Our researchers looked into the life of Altair Ibn Lahad, hoping to find a biography that might serve as a positive role model for Abstergo's global outreach programs. Unfortunately, this renegade assassin proved to be no such thing. In much of his footage, we see a man gleefully flouting some of his culture's most entrenched taboos with an arrogance that borders on messianic. I'll tell you, no, this is not our way. To burn a man's body is forbidden. Many of our researchers felt that the arguments articulated by Altair's rival, a man known as Abbas, were clearer and more cogent than any we heard from Altair. I recently put in a request that more effort be dedicated to locating one of Abbas's descendants, if any exist. It's clear to us that Altair's transgressions were the primary motivation behind the ultimate dissolution of his despicable order by the middle of the 13th century. We therefore strongly recommend a pass on this property in favor of a more agreeable and inspiring figure from this era. Cannot believe they did our boy Altair bad like that. Let's see how they feel about Ezio. Our initial reports gave us hope that Enzio Auditori would serve as an ideal candidate for future Abstergo projects. His charisma, sexual magnetism, and wry humor gave him all the qualities of a leading man. However, his corruption by the assassin order robbed him of these qualities as he fell deeper and deeper into a spiral of revenge. Enzio was frequently known to articulate a passive acceptance of evil. He was also a man of ugly contradictions, one who preached free thought, yet traveled well beyond his home country to proselytize his corrupted creed, just as he's doing here with this impressionable Chinese girl. Notice, too, that in his gestures and bearing, there is still something of the old lecher in him. Enzio's entire personality is built around pure demagoguery, claiming his philosophy is about love when violence and coercion are his primary means of tackling problems. We have therefore come to the conclusion that Enzio Auditori da Firenze would be a risky character to develop. Ridiculous. And what about our boy Connor? Ah, Miss Connor. Our initial research into the life of Ratana Gaiden focused on a period spanning his late teens to his early 30s. But our researchers came away unimpressed by his calm and stoic demeanor, with occasional flashes of extreme anger. This was not the sort of leading man we felt comfortable endorsing. We decided, therefore, to delve into his early childhood, with the hope that scenes of pre-colonial America might hold some appeal. As you can see here, there is a certain naive charm and innocence to this young boy. Unfortunately, our researchers found this young man's story deeply problematic as well. For one, the omnipresence of the Mohawk culture lacks the balance necessary to tell the true story of America. And secondly, the Mohawk language would certainly be an issue for most of our audience. We therefore feel that although Ratana Tankon's early life would be of some interest to our more educated viewers, it's unlikely that his story would appeal on a broader scale, being too foreign, as it were, to normal audiences. Our team recommends we pass on this property. Ridiculous. But, Subject 17, Memo 4. It's the last one. So, this will be a short one, Dad. Uh, something to remember me by if things go south. If I don't make it out of the temple today. I've tried to be optimistic about all this, but I, uh, I just can't. I think spending all this time in Connor's memories has made me anxious. I mean, his story is so painful in so many ways. Still, he never lost hope when his faith and others eroded. I can only believe that what we are doing is the right thing, and that I can stop this disaster. I know this. I mean, the technology
technology is there, waiting for us to use it. I'm the final piece of the puzzle. Something in my genes, or my memories. Some final piece of code to switch the whole thing on. That's why I'm here. That's why they brought me here. Only, uh... I, I don't know what I'll have to give up in return. My sanity. My life. It's, it's impossible to say. I do know this. Our battle with the Templars will not be over. But whatever's inside that temple is not an ending. It's just another chapter in this, this endless story. And it'll be your job. And Mom's, and, and Sean's, and Rebecca's. To keep turning the pages. You know, I, I keep thinking about something Orson Welles once said. Something like, if you, if you want a happy ending, it all depends on where you stop telling your story. So maybe, maybe that's the answer. Maybe that's how people keep marching forward. If something goes wrong in their dead, something happens to me. When you tell my story years from now, please tell them the one about how I lost my way. Then I found it again. Just in time to save the world. And, and just... There, unfortunately, we say goodbye to Desmond for a long time, a long time, and we're going to say goodbye to this long, long chapter in the Assassin's Creed story. Up next is Assassin's Creed 4, technically, Freedom Cry where we're going to spend some time with another one of our friends. Let's see, do we have one? Oh, they did him dirty. We'll be joining Adewale. Years after Black Flag's ending. Not the epilogue, but the, the departure of Edward and Jenny from Great Inagua as he's an assassin in his own right. So. This has been Jeff the Narrator. Proud employee of Abstergo Entertainment. And remember, the future is bright and history is our playground. May the Father of Understanding guide us. Or, better yet, this is a story, one of thousands, that this fantastic franchise is bringing to us. So, much like the Animus, until next time, keep telling stories. <laughs>